It's a beautiful scene that. I'll sort of pin it on. I just had to stop and take a picture of that. The green is amazing. Absolutely amazing. All around is beauty. It's a beautiful coo. And if they got started to cut this down, this if they got decide to cut this down. I think that would be absolute criminal. And here's our lovely wood. These are the guardians of the wood, the witnesses of the wood, the supporters of the wood, the silent voices of the wood. Here, yeah. these beautiful photosizing powerhouses. Listen and look. They're going to have some lovely rain very soon. Now, somebody the other day, right, was talking about big trees being harmful to the wood. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Big trees. These are the big trees around here. Okay, they've been thinned out a bit here and there. It's awful to kill a tree. But the trees have always provided us with furniture, wood for fires, all sorts of things. They live on in our homes. They live on. They're beautiful. I've loved trees all my life, and a lot of people do. There's something about a tree that when you're a child, <coughs> You know it's alive. You talk to the trees when you're a kid. You do. You play on them. You get stuck up on them. <laughs> you chop them down. You learn when you're a child about the beautiful things. I've always loved nature. All my life, as long as I can remember, from a small child, I was fortunate to have a lovely field and fields to play in trees to climb. We had trees that were the nice trees, mainly oaks. We had trees that were very tall that no one would climb. Um, and we had the trees covered in ivy that everyone was scared of that used to have the hornet's nests in and things like that and you wouldn't climb them either. And when I was a kid, about 12, one day this particular tree, we call it an ivy tree, it wasn't an ivy tree, but it was covered in ivy. And it looked very spooky. And at night, it was tall, it was in, our, in the field. Its big tall branches used to wave in the storms. And they used to cause shadows on my bedroom wall. And always scared me, that tree. All my life it scared me. Now, we used to have bonfires every year, like every lot of other people at Guy Fawkes time. And we often used to go out as kids and chop down the odd tree or pick up dead branches and put them on our bonfire. We used to build the bonfire weeks ahead. The kids used to do it, not the blokes, the kids. We'd go round the homes getting newspapers and cardboard boxes, old settees. You know, that's what we did. The children did it. There were big boys. That, um, the big boys, up until about 14, I think, then then they didn't do it anymore. Somehow it, you didn't do that when you were over 14. Um, so it was always passed down through the different little gangs. Anyway, one day, it was me and a boy, I won't name him, we went to a man I knew. They had a piano and they used to let me in their house sometimes, and I used to sit and talk to them as a kid. I always loved their piano, and um, so we didn't have one. But Mr. He, was, he was called Mr. Brookenshire, actually. He was a man who lived in his shed. He was always in his shed making things, and he had lots of tools. 
And uh, he fascinated me because my own dad wasn't with us um, a lot of my early childhood. Most of it, actually, all of it, apart from up to the age of two and a half. He was still alive, but anyway, that's a different story. A war story, I call that. Although it was post-war. Hey, one day, me and this boy, we asked Mr. Brookinshire if we could borrow his two-man saw. We said, getting ready for bonfire. So he was quite happy to let us borrow it, because he knew about the bonfire. And we often had big logs to saw up. And he knew me, and he said, yes, you can take the saw. But he had no idea what, I, what we were going to do. Now, this tree was very big. And believe me, it was a big tree. It was the biggest tree in the field. It was the ivy tree. And me and this boy, just me and him, we started to saw with the two-man saw through it. And we got all the way through, apart from a thick bit of bark. It just hung there, the tree. He climbed the tree with a rope. No fear, you see, in those days. He said, we'll have to pull on it. Anyway, it wouldn't budge. Meanwhile, the whole of the home surrounding the field, all the women, the men, old men mainly, I think, came out. And they said, God, what's Sheila doing? It's going to fall on the railway line. It's going to fall on our homes. And of course, we got scared then as well. In the end, the big boys came. The big boys, teenagers, over 14 came and they got the rope. I mean, the other, my, my friend who got up the tree was very brave, really. I mean, he got up the tree and put the rope round it. Anyway, they tugged and they pulled. There was cracking and moaning. And the tree started to sway. God, it was scary. Like was, everyone thought it was going to fall on the railway line or on their home. But they managed to pull it down into the field. That tree stayed there, the trunk, for many years. Many, many years. People came though, cut off branches, took them home, logs for the fire. And that was a story. There are other stories of the trees in my childhood. One we always called the oak tree. I don't know if it ever was an oak tree, actually. Um, but it was the one to get in the gang, you had to be able to climb up one side and get down the other. It was also quite hollow inside. Anyway, years later I'd left a long time. After the death of my mother I left and went to live in another place. Burnham on Sea. When my mum died. I lived there for about 18 months and then I started to explore the world I'm afraid. Left Somerset completely. Anyway, I heard later that girl I knew very, very well had got her head stuck in the oak tree. It was in the papers. <sighs> Don't know how she did it, really. But anyway, she had to be cut out the tree. It could have been the end of the tree, I think. I've been back many years later. Say 40 years later. There's houses everywhere on that field now. Houses. All the trees gone. There were a couple of little bushes though. Little shrubs. And I think some of them were what remained of the trees. <sighs> so that's a little story of childhood and the love of trees. So when I go walking in this wood, I fully respect trees. And having been a biology science teacher and a qualified NHS nurse, I've loved preserving life. It's just built in. Obviously you've got to have common sense 
a tree gets struck by lightning, falls on someone's home. There are things. But to deliberately clear an area to expose the archaeology in this day and age, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, look. Lovely, isn't it? Lovely trees. Lovely wood, and I'm getting quite hot, so I'm going to take my jumper off and have a drink of water now. Over in it for now.